What's up guys, Eric Thane here from Cinema Mastery and today I'm going to dive into another cinematography breakdown for you guys. Um, I guess, quick backstory before I get into this. Uh, this is a video that I was a DP on. This actually wasn't produced by my production company, Celadora, um, and I wasn't even the director. This was produced by Orenda Creative, and uh, the director was Elizabeth Mayfis. Um, quick backstory before I get into some of the behind the scenes. Uh, Elizabeth was actually a student of mine. She came to me uh, about two years ago, maybe three years. Uh, I'm not sure how long it's been. A couple of years ago, she came to me and uh, was looking for some help. Uh, learning how to build her own video production business. And Elizabeth's had some experience in the past as an actress. She's done some producing. Uh, she's very talented in those realms, but didn't have a lot of experience working on her own videos and shooting and directing. And she had this dream of being a director. And uh, she's very talented, um, but she's just struggling kind of getting off the ground with it. And so she came in, uh, she, she jumped into my program, Cinema Mastery, and started learning the cinematography aspect of it and growing a business and that kind of thing. And then eventually she signed up for my crew program, which is kind of a one-on-one -on -one mentorship where I actually take people through, here's how to grow your business and how to attract really high paying clients in your business, create cinematic videos. And uh, we did that, we kind of built her business together. And so she, um, has done very well with that and uh, has done some incredible stuff and has started getting and attracting these uh, really high paying clients into her business. And uh, this one that I'm going to show you today was one of those. So this is a uh, project for Saint Emilion, uh, France, the wine region out there uh, in France, it's one of the most prestigious wine regions in the world. And they got in touch with her and saw another video that we'd worked on together. And they said, we got to have you out to do this. And so they were celebrating 20 years of being a World Heritage Site as part of UNESCO and said, we want a video to commemorate that. We want to tell a really pretty story. And so uh, they actually hired Elizabeth and her company out to come do this. And the cool part is that she actually turned around then and um, hired me to come and be the DP on it, which was a really cool uh, full circle experience. So we had a lot of fun. This was an amazing shoot. Just had a blast out there together. Spent a whole week out there, uh, location scouting, shooting, uh, putting the whole thing together. And it was awesome. So I'm going to show you a couple uh, scenes. We're going to talk about one scene from this video today. I'm going to show you some of the, the clips and then uh, we'll kind of go into some behind the scenes and show you what we did. So first of all, let's go ahead and bring it up. Um, this is the first scene that the video starts out with and we've got this old grandpa who's kind of going through his study and looking out the window and he sees his granddaughter and his son out in the vineyards uh, looking at the grapes and his son is teaching his granddaughter uh, how to run the vineyard basically because these vineyards are family legacies that have been passed on for generations. And so we see him in the study uh, kind of running around and this is the scene we're going to be talking about. So I'll just show it to you here real quick. <laughs> Okay, so you get the idea. We're not going to go to the outside, but starting with the interior, this is kind of what we're talking about. So we've got Grandpa in his study. He's, uh, you know, we've got some nice hard light coming through the windows. We're going to be talking about how to light interior scenes like this using hard light. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Um, first of all, I guess a uh, quick behind the scenes image. This is, uh, this is us kind of working on this. We've got Elizabeth right here. This is me. And uh, I always get people asking what cameras are you shooting on? What lenses are you using? So I guess we'll, we'll uh, talk about that real quick. This is the Scarlet W, red, uh, see the red Scarlet W right here that we're shooting on. Uh, this is a great camera. It's uh, my camera. I shoot pretty much everything on it nowadays and it's uh, phenomenal. We're using a blue shaped battery here on the back right there. And then uh, we've got Sigma Art lenses on the front. So we're using the Sigma 18 to 35 lens zoomed into 35. These lenses are like for the price, they're just absolutely incredible. And so you just get a really nice, sharp, clean look that works really well for a video like this. And uh, 35 millimeters is kind of my sweet spot as far as focal lengths go. I think the last four or five, maybe even six uh, films that I've shot, I've shot almost exclusively uh, on this lens and at 35 millimeters. Um, and that's just a thing that I don't know why I just kind of developed, but uh, that's kind of, I guess, the way I like to work. Uh, here on the front, we've got the map box. This is from Wooden Camera. It's their uh, universal 
map box. Uh, so we can do some filtration and uh, pretty simple. Now we've got the camera sitting on a tripod. It's like a Sackler tripod that we got from the rental house in France. Um, we're not shooting anything on a tripod, nothing fixed. We're actually using the easy rig on this shoot, but it's worth pointing out that when I'm lighting scenes, I almost always have the camera on a tripod. And the reason for that is because I want to see what the light looks like through the camera. It doesn't really matter what it looks like to my eye. I want to know what it looks like to the camera. And so I've got the camera set up from the angle that we're going to be shooting. And then I'm moving the lights around and I'm actually fixing things to look the way that I want it to on the camera. So I'm always going back and checking the camera. What does the camera look like? And so even if you're not shooting with a tripod or you're not shooting fixed shots, it's always good to have one handy for this reason. Uh, moving on to the next one, you can see, okay, so here now you can see the, the easy rig here. Can't really see that, but I'm just wearing that vest there. Basically the easy rig, if you haven't used an easy rig before, it's not stabilization for the camera, okay? It's not, not like a gimbal or, or, uh, or a steady cam or anything, okay? It's just camera support. It's so that it's basically the easy rig distributes the weight of the camera to your hips so you're not blowing out your back holding a heavy camera all day, and especially a camera like this with all these attachments on it, like it gets heavy. And so you're not blowing out your back with it. It puts all, kind of distributes all that weight onto your hips so that you can shoot longer. And then it also just kind of supports the camera. The nice thing about the easy rig is you can move it up and down uh, with the cameras. You can kind of get the shots that you want, but it also, uh, it's, it's helpful because it takes on the weight of the camera. And then you as an operator can focus on just operating the camera and pointing it at the direction you want and pulling focus and doing whatever you need to do without having to also worry about carrying the weight of the camera, right? So I really like shooting on the easy rig. I pretty much use it on every shoot uh, nowadays. And that's kind of what you're seeing there. Okay, so let's jump into some of the stills that you saw in the clips that I showed a minute ago. Uh, this is basically our hero shot. We've got grandpa here uh, looking out the window at his son and granddaughter. And you notice we have this really hard, nice, uh, hard light coming through the window. Let me get a different color here so you can see it. So we're hitting his hair right there. We've got some of this coming down his jacket right there. You can see it on the other side. And so we've got this really nice hard light hitting him. And then you can see the same light also hitting the background here, right? Now, here's why we're doing this. Uh, Elizabeth and I, before this shoot, we spent some time looking at references and deciding how we wanted to shoot this scene and what we wanted it to look like. And some of the references we found had this really interesting use of hard light. You know, when, when people work with window light, a lot of times when we refer to window light, we're talking about that soft light that is naturally created by windows. But we wanted to think like, how could we use this hard light and kind of break up the scene with this? And so it creates a really uh, interesting look. Um, this scene with the grandpa looking out at his son and granddaughter is actually supposed to be in the morning, but we weren't shooting in the morning. We decided to shoot this one in the middle of the day. The sun is actually over on this side of the house. So we're not getting any direct sunlight into the house. And that's on purpose. Uh, we chose to shoot on this side, even though this room is actually mirrored and there's windows on the other side as well. We chose to shoot on this side so we didn't have any direct light to be competing with. And we didn't want our light coming from straight above, right? Because it was the middle of the day. For a morning scene, the, the sun is going to be lower in the sky. It's going to have more of a golden look to it. And so we're motivating our light based off of those things to make it feel like it's morning time. And so what we did is outside this window, out here we've got a Joker HMI. Uh, let's see, it's a Joker Bug 800 out there. And we're using that to simulate our window light. Now it took a lot of, uh, we spent a lot of time moving this light around, adjusting it up and down, side to side, trying to get the light just right so that we're getting this look the way we wanted it with the light kind of broken up among the books in the background, um, getting a little bit of his uh, shadow there in the background, all these interesting things happening with the light there. And so that took a little bit of finessing to make that happen, but that's essentially what's going on here. It's pretty, pretty simple. We've got basically this HMI out here. It's blasting through the window and then hitting our talent and the background. Now we had to get the angle right, of course, because we want it to feel like it's sunlight coming in. We've got to get the direction right so that we're getting the light where we want it. But that's essentially what's going on. Now, one other thing that we did here, let's see, we've got, uh, here's also a close up. So you can see more of that light hitting the background here. 
And then also hitting our talent. You can see where it's hitting his shirt there. Got spots of light uh, hitting his hair. And then even on this side of his face and his chin there, you can see uh, some effects of that. And that's what we're going for, these little spots of light. Uh, again, I've talked about this in another video, but looking for areas of light versus areas of dark just creates that contrast in your video. It's going to make it feel um, a lot more professional and more appealing. And so you've got these bright areas uh, where the light's hitting him, but then you've also got these dark areas in the back here where you're starting to see this contrast between our talent and the background, right? Now, what's happening here is because it's actually the middle of the day, um, this worked out really nicely because we not only do we have these areas, these hot spots kind of hitting our talent like this, but we also do still have that really nice soft light kind of coming down our talent's face. And so you can see that this side of his face is a little bit lighter right there. And then we've got a little bit more shadow on this side. Okay. And so we're getting that nice soft light is flattering on him, but then we have these spots of hard light uh, that are also really interesting. I dropped my pen. Um, to kind of break it up and make it a little bit more interesting. Okay. Now, the other thing that we did, you notice that our background is uh, pretty dark here and uh, there were windows on the other side of the room. So, so if you can imagine this room over here on this side, there's basically mirrored the same windows and we've got uh, those closed and we've got floppies in front of them to stop the light coming through because we want to make sure we have that contrast. We want to make sure that our light is directional. And so the light's coming through the window and we don't want lots of fill light happening in the background so that we can kind of draw our viewer's eye in here onto our talent. Okay. And so that's what's going on there. That's why we were able to create this nice uh, moody background here. Let's see, moving on. Okay, so here's a quick behind the scenes shot of what's going on outside the window. This is not fully set up yet, so you're not seeing the light point in the right direction, but you can see here, let me get color. Um, we've got our HMI right there. This is our light that we're using. This right here is the window that we had our talent inside of. So that HMI was actually pointed this way towards our talent. The books are back there. And basically this is the setup. Now we did do some reverse shots where we had the light actually coming in this window to do some other things. Uh, but this is basically what we had going on. So uh, that's our joker bug. We've got the ballast down here is uh, sitting on an apple box. Kind of keep it off the ground, make sure it's not getting wet or anything. And that's pretty much it. Um, you can see these, uh, these window panes that we've got on the windows. So those are the same on the other side of the room. And those are what we closed in order to stop the, the sunlight, the actual sunlight coming in the other side of the room. Uh, the problem is that there's these diamond shapes in them. And so we were still getting sunlight. And so we ended up having to go put floppies up, uh, big dark black solids in front of those in order to stop that light kind of coming through. So another little tidbit there. Um, okay. So I haven't really talked about this yet. We, uh, because we're shooting a morning scene here, we want it to feel like morning. Typically the light coming from the sun in the morning is more golden looking, right? And so we knew we needed to use some gels. We didn't have a gel frame in order to put the gels in. And so we ended up having one of our grips, uh, kind of holding our gels up. And these gels are a combination of CTO and CTS. So that's color temperature, orange and color temperature straw, I guess. Uh, that we're using there in order to put in front of the light. And so what we would do is we'd have him when we were just about to hit record and say, okay, put it up. And he would put it up. And then uh, when we were done, he'd pull him down and he was a really good sport kind of taking care of that for us. And so that's how we're creating that kind of warm look coming through the windows here. Okay. You can kind of see that. Now, moving on. Um, I wanted to show you this because this is a little bit different. This is the exact same setup except without the HMI. The reason we did this is because uh, there's another scene in the video at the end of the video that's, um, <clears throat> that's in the same location with the same person, but it's actually meant to be later in the day because uh, after the video transpires, he's, he goes through and he's down in the wine cellar and he's looking through these bottles and then he comes back. So we wanted the time of day to feel different, even though we shot these back to back. And so we turned off the HMI, we used the natural window light. And so therefore it feels more like 
a middle of the day type of shoot where we've got just light coming through the windows. Okay. And we're doing some really cool kind of, <coughs> excuse me, um, some really cool kind of just playing with the mirror here, uh, creating interesting compositions, placing him kind of off center and then his reflection over here as well, just to uh, make it interesting. And then uh, here's the last shot that I wanted to show you. This is just uh, another behind the scenes, kind of shows you what's going on here. We've got me and Elizabeth uh, working here with the Easy Rig, and then our talent here uh, where we're shooting him. Okay. So I think that's about all I wanted to go into. This is one way that you can light an interior scene. Now, notice that we're using hard light and motivating sunlight. That's the most important thing is when you're putting together your lighting setups and thinking about how you want to light your videos. Uh, one, having references is really helpful. <clears throat> Knowing, looking at what other people have done and how they've lit their scenes and then figuring out how to do it and, how, and, and pulling inspiration from those is helpful. And then also thinking about where would the light naturally be coming from? And that's kind of what our thought process was here. If we want this to be a morning scene, then we need the light coming from that direction. So what light can we use to simulate that sunlight and to make it feel like, uh, make it feel motivated, make it feel like that light is real and it's coming from a natural source rather than being something that we set up. So anyway, hope that was helpful for you guys. Um, if you're interested in watching more videos like these, I've got a few on the channel already. I'm going to be doing more of these cinematography breakdowns. Um, if you are interested in learning more about lighting, I actually have a course that is all about lighting where I go in depth into the lighting theory, um, where you can actually learn exactly how to light things and how lighting works. Uh, no matter what gear you're using, it doesn't matter if it's cheap gear, if it's expensive gear or you're in with any camera so that you can make your videos look a lot more cinematic. And I'll put a link down to that. Uh, in the description below. It's called Lighting Secrets. And that's actually on sale right now. So go ahead and check that out. And uh, if you guys like this video, please hit like, subscribe, leave a comment down below, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.